answer. Hey, Patty. Yeah, you're muted too. Hi, Don. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. It's, it looks like it's just you and I. All right, we'll have a meeting. We'll get this done. <laughs> that, would, that would be a good meeting. So you realize we're going to be for a couple hours tonight. I'm a little worried. <laughs> Are you doing Thursday too? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Thank you. And I, is it just you and I? So far. Okay. Oh, Sue says, say hi. Um, I, has, I don't know if John's had a chance to talk to you, but um, I'm thinking if we could, um, uh, could you maybe also do TDI minutes? When do you meet? Um, I think the next time September, so it'll be a bit, but if you oh, would, uh, just touch base, touch base with John Shattuck and, and he can give you the schedule and stuff. Oh, good. Okay. I'll talk with John. Yes, I'd love to. Okay. That, that would be great. Right. So, um, just taking advantage of the fact that it's you and I. <laughs> when do you meet for TBI? Uh, well, we've kind of gotten to where we're trying to meet, uh, we were meeting every month. We take a couple months off, uh, probably six to eight times a year. Uh, wow. Recently, we've had a few extra meetings, uh, just like we're doing with planning board, but yeah. talk to John. John has the schedule. Good, I will, I'll talk to him, thank but, you. And I, I put, I think he gave me a couple dates. He said, which would you rather, rather do? And I think I picked the September date for our next meeting, right? They just had a special one on Monday. Hey, Tommy. Hi, Tom. Hey, Patty, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Fancy, fancy, fancy meeting you here. You look tan, Patty. <laughs> I know, my, my screen makes me look a little back, I'm not sure, but it was really hot in North Carolina. Whoa, boy, too hot to sit in the sun. <laughs> I'll bet. There's Ron. Hey, Ron. So, Tom, I'm using my wife's computer. I may end up having to go back to my iPad if I get lost trying to use this thing. So if I disappear, 
And Patty, I guess you're letting people in, but if I disappear, uh, or maybe and Andrew is. Um, it's not because I didn't want to be, but um, it's because I, I didn't quite get the technology on my wife's. It's all right from here. So this is good. We have a quorum. Hey, Scott. Larry. Hello. Nice to meet you, Larry. I'm Don Spann. Hi, Larry. I'm Tom. Welcome. And hello, Larry. As it says right there in the corner, I'm yeah, Scott. You. Yeah, you're, you're still muted, Larry. No, I'm not, I don't think. No, nope, now you're not. You're good now. Okay. Well, I'll form formally in a minute welcome aboard, but welcome aboard. Thank you. So Scott and Tommy introduce themselves. Tommy is yeah. our vice. Um, and Ron, and he's been on the board how, for how many years, Ron? Yeah, you're muted. I just told my space bar down. It takes off the mute. There he is. There, Ron. So it shows you're unmuted, but I'm I'm not hearing you still. I just heard him. Oh, did you? Good. Yep, I heard Ron. I'm still not hearing Ron. That's bizarre. Good news is we have a quorum, guys. That always helps, Don, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. So if we can't, or if all of us, I don't know, Scott, can you hear Ron? I can't hear Ron. I can hear you. I can hear Larry. I heard Patty and Tom. Yeah. But you, Ron, you don't look like you're muted. It doesn't say mute on your screen. How about the volume control on his computer? Well, it's odd though. Larry said he can hear him. Yeah, I just heard Ron again. Something about his volume control on his computer. That was that was Tom talked about that. Unless that was me. Oh, uh, maybe Ron? it was Tom. Don, I saw do you Ron. Know if other people are coming, or is it just us? I think Bruce, but I don't know for sure. Josh will not. Josh is excused, Patty. Ron, we can always use sign language. Thumb up is yes, thumb down is no. So, Andrew, are, are you controlling this? I am, yep. Would it, would it make sense for Ron to leave and then try back to come back in? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good strategy for troubleshooting it. Everything looks to be good on my end. I, I can't hear him, but I understand Larry can. Probably logging out and then coming back in might be a good, good choice, yep. So, Ron, why don't you leave, and then Andrew will, will let you back in. Bruce. There's Bruce. 
Good evening, Bruce. How you doing, Don? Hey, Don, when did the uh, email to this link come out? I got the one that says, by now you've received it. And then I got the one that said, it's in a day, and that's how I got in. But the original one, I'm having trouble finding. When did that go out? You know? You'll have to ask Andrew. Um, um, I, Bruce probably wrong. last Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I, I got it on uh, the 14th. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, we attempt to set them up a week prior to the meetings, folks. But I do, I do appreciate you sending it out again because I was trying to switch to another computer. And even though I set up on my iPad because I'd copied the link, I had to get it to this computer and I couldn't find the email. And then I, as I was always looking for it, I just got the new reminder, right? So that was good. Yeah, I have it set to provide a reminder one week out, one day out, and one hour out. And I know it provides for a lot of emails in your inbox, but I figure... Uh, more, more the links, uh, more the reminders, the better, perhaps. So, yeah, without it, without one of them, I wouldn't be here. So that's good. Somewhat ironically, I did not get the one a week ago. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I didn't get. <laughs> or I, or, but I wasn't. Or I couldn't. I, was, I wasn't on the board a week ago either, Bruce. So you got a, You got a good excuse. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I can't beat up Andrew about that. I'm not beating up anybody. I'm sure it's me. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Um, all right, one more minute and we'll get started. The 14th. And there she is. Yep. Good. Okay, Rod, I just responded. Um, let's call this meeting to order. Um, a few things. Uh, first of all, good evening. Uh, this will consist of a formal meeting and a workshop. We have a few items to cover. Uh, we'll review, or we'll proceed to call the roll and review the, the meeting minutes after reviewing the minutes and addressing uh, any outstanding business. The formal meeting will be closed, right? So. Um, it's standard practice and that's what we're going to do tonight. Uh, we will have a public session um, during the workshop. Uh, what I'm at least looking to, and, and Rod will talk about this more, uh, but to try to have um, um, the consultants um, have some time and the board to have some time for probably about half an hour or so and then allow about an hour and a half for public input. Um, that being said, that's just notional. Um, I do, before we start though, want to uh, welcome our new board member, uh, Larry, and maybe uh, Rod, you can introduce Larry to the board. Do we still have Rod on here? Looks like Rod has left uh, us. I guess he has. <laughs> So, <laughs> so Andrew, I know you met with him as well. Maybe you could uh, take the lead there. Uh, Larry uh, can probably speak for himself. I know he's been a long-term resident here uh, in Topsom on River Road uh, for, I think, over 20 years. 
he works for the um, Workers Compensation Board, and he can provide a little bit more information about his background. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be on the planning board. Um, I have, uh, of course, grad I'm a graduate of Cornell Law School uh, back in 1980 uh, and was involved with land use planning information and course of study back then. Uh, I've been on a zoning, very active zoning board of adjustment in another state before I came back to Maine, which is my native state. Uh, and right now I work for the state of Maine uh, as what's called an employee advocate, uh, representing people on their workers' compensation cases uh, through mediation and formal hearing. Excellent. Well, welcome. Thank you. I also wanted to take a second and thank uh, Tom, Scott, and Ron for agreeing to uh, serve on the board for another three years, right? So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, just before I take the roll, um, I Bruce, did don't smile so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like that smile. Um, so uh, before I take the roll call, um, I did want to let you know, I did hear from Josh, you will not be able to make it this evening. Um, so he has been excused. Uh, Patty, could you take the roll? Patty, you're muted. John Stan. Present. Ronald Gaston. Ron is present. Okay, thank you. And Larry Brand, welcome, Larry. Thank you, present. Uh, Scott Levy. Present. Joshua Spooner has been excused, and Tom Thompson. Present. And Bruce Benoit. Present. All right, great, thank you. You're welcome. So we have minutes from the June 16th meeting. Um, I guess I'll entertain a motion, Tommy. I move that we accept the minutes of June 16, 2020 as written. Do we have any um, second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor signal with an aye. Aye. And Ron raised his hand, excellent. So. And Oh, and I, and I have to abstain from that because I was not present at that meeting, Don. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Larry. Me too, Don, I think, right? On the 16th. What date? I, it was 16th. June, June 16th. Weren't you oh, at June? June? Yeah, okay. June 16th. Yep. All right. I so. was there. So I vote in the affirmative as well. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh -huh. We have a second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And Ron, hand up. So, and no one abstained from that one. That's good. All right. So we're going to move into workshop. Um, basically, I think what we were, where we should start is uh, a few comments from the planning staff, uh, talking about how we're going to run this, and then we'll get into the meat of the discussion um, after we go through that. So Rod, I, are you doing this or Andrew? Andrew's gonna step up and uh, do this and I will chime in if needed. Okay, and thanks for rejoining us. Computer just crashed, I hope it doesn't do it again. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Yeah. Although um, the workshop is a conversation between the board and the applicant landowner, the planning board has reserved time at each workshop to hear from the public on the topics at hand. If you're interested in speaking to the board, please wait until the chairman opens the public comment session. When the public session is open, please raise your hand via the chat function. The meeting facilitator will promote you to a panelist so that you can turn on your camera and your microphone. Please provide your name and address for the record. After you're done speaking, you'll be shifted back to a meeting attendee role. 
Since we have a large number of interested uh, members of the public, please keep your comments to less than three minutes and limited to the topic at hand. The workshop is intended to end by nine o'clock. If necessary, the board will consider extending the meeting beyond. All meeting materials for this session and future sessions of the board related to this Crooker rezoning request are available at topsummain.com slash Crooker. In addition to the meeting materials, directions are provided to submit comments in advance of meetings. Comments are compiled on a weekly basis and posted once a week, generally on Fridays. Okay, thank you. So I, I guess I would open it up to the board first uh, to see if you have any comments um, uh, in regards to the applicant's presentation and public comment session. Uh, we'll, we'll begin after that. But, uh, and staff has provided a memo outlining the administrative and facilitation considerations. We should address any ideas the board has at this time. So uh, Tommy, do you have anything? Or do we want to discuss the ex parte part of this now? I think so. Um, and maybe Rod, can you kind of fill us in on that? Um, yeah. Hold on, let me. <clears throat> so um, while this is not a uh, development proposal uh, under our quasi-judicial function, you are not bound by ex parte communication. Uh, what Andrew just explained was our website comment, public comment and compiling that we're doing through the, via the planning office. So while you, um, what I would suggest is that the comments, uh, public comments by the applicant should all come through the planning office and be distributed publicly. I think that will be the most fair and equitable way to do this. So um, even to board comments and what have you, uh, we set up the planning at topsofmain.com. That is where we are receiving comments for this specific issue here. So um, again, that's on the website at the uh, topsofmain.com slash crooker. And hopefully in an ideal world, we'll, it will work perfectly and we'll retrieve all comments and make them available for everyone. Okay, and as far as comments, um, as you probably know, we've been getting comments up through uh, the minute, right? I, I think that at some point um, uh, we need to get into a little bit more of a, a standard cycle so that you have an opportunity to review everything. Uh, so Rod, maybe you can address that as well. Yeah, and, and you know, this is, our, this is our first meeting where we will be having public comment uh, after the board and the applicant have a discussion, public comment will be open and the board will then have a discussion after public comment. Uh, that's the format of this meeting. Uh, again, this may be flexible as we move forward and as we learn what may be the best approach, but um, what we're trying to do in the planning office is compile all public comments and make them available the Friday before, or the Friday of each week actually. Um, so when we get comments in at the last minute, uh, it makes it more difficult, not only for the staff, but for the public and for the applicant and for the board to digest those comments. So ideally what we're trying to do is uh, on a weekly basis, upload everything and, um, and then the following week again, upload everything and, and have weekly comments. Okay, and, and again, I guess I would reiterate the best way to get comments to the board uh, for the public is to please get those to the planning staff so they can get those posted. And the board's gonna be reviewing all comments that are posted uh, on the website. Um, so I asked Tommy, did Tommy, do you have anything else? I, I would just wanna stress with everybody listening, that, uh, we want everybody to know that we're very interested in your comments and your concerns very important for us to hear from everyone who has an opinion pro or con. Uh, so far we've received many letters ranging from one to 54 pages. And I, and you're going to hear me say this a couple of times and I encourage each of you go to topsomain.com slash crooker for information. And if you have any concerns during, after this meeting, write an email to the 
planning staff at planning at opsofmaine.com. These letters will be read, carefully considered, and we really want to hear from you, from everybody on either side of the issue. Larry, you have any comments? Uh, just join in what Tom just said. That uh, yeah, get everything in, and hopefully all is considered by everybody. Scott, um, we just making general comments here. You're, we're going to wait to get into the meat of the things, right? No, we're, yeah, we're, we're really more talking. The topic about today on the at least on the proposed schedule is consistency, and we're going to be discussing a schedule and some draft draft resolve, right? Right. Okay, and, but are we getting, we're going to get a that that that's coming presentation up. first, then we'll start talking about it. Right. Okay. Right now is more about anything you want to talk about, whether it's ex parte communication, uh, reviewing comments, uh, requesting information, um, and and how the information is getting to you and so forth. So, right now, there's a lot of information getting to me. Okay. Thank Good. you, Bruce. Yeah, just the process following through the planning staff. If People think sending emails directly to me is the way to get there. Um, I, I get several hundred and that wouldn't be good. Um, the best way to get me focused on this is to have them sorted through the planning staff and that's where I can focus and get on them. So that sounds great. And I, I think Tommy said it great. You know, you wanna hear it and that's just the best way to do it. Okay, all right. Ron, did you have any comments? Okay. All right. So unless there's anything else, I'm going to start into the discussion on the project. Um, and maybe if um, Reagan and Frank, uh, if you would like to uh, kind of give us a, a quick thumbnail of, of what your expectations are and so forth and what you're looking for this evening, uh, then we'll open up to the board for some comments and discussion. Okay, uh, this is Frank O'Hara. I think that Scott uh, kind of summarized what we're thinking about today. We want to hear from people who like, don't like the project, and also uh, try to get all the details of what everybody is saying. I mean, we've read all the comments ourselves internally. It shows people have a great love for their neighborhood, a great love for Topsom, uh, um, and uh, we'd like to be able to do a project that accommodates and enhances the quality of life in Topsom. So uh, we expect to hear all the comments. I might, might make some, at the end of that, I would uh, like to make some sort of general observations on, the, on what was in the letters and what we hear tonight. And then a discussion about the core issue about, is this, the core issue is, is a proposed rezoning possibly in line with the comprehensive plan update. It's not definitely, we're not asking that whether it's definitely, but is it conceivable that it could be? And um, I think some of the people here tonight were going to say it's not conceivable that you could do this and be consistent. And, you know, our position and some of the other people's position here is that give us a chance. Let's take a look at it. Let's design an ordinance that protects the area and that allows economic activity to go forward. And um, just remembering, we're now looking at a zoning ordinance phase of it. We're not actually doing the application. We're not gonna have studies about noise or studies about water quality and so forth. That's an application phase kind of a thing. This is what's an ordinance look like that would provide those protections. So that's, that's what we're looking for tonight. Okay. Reagan, did you have something? No, Frank summarized it. Uh, we are looking forward to hearing comments uh, from everyone. And like you said, we have reviewed uh, several letters uh, that the town has put on the website. And so we're looking forward to hearing from more people tonight. Okay, good. So I want to spend some time with the board and some comments, and then we'll open up uh, to get some uh, public uh, comments in a public session. So, um, and I have a, a couple thoughts, but I think Tommy, why don't I let you go first? And what I guess I'd ask about is a couple things. Uh, they've proposed a resolution 
and they've also proposed a schedule. Um, however, if you want to start with a discussion about the board, um, you know, I'll, I'll conceivability of, of, of doing this, then for, certainly start with that. But you, you take it from here. Um, I, I, like everyone else, I have a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. And, um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. They don't have to answer them now, maybe next time around. Um, I'm not looking for a site plan by any stretch of the imagination, but is there a rough concept plan out there of the project in place with a map that clearly defines uh, the proposed new industrial zone? And before we move forward, I personally would like to see a first draft wording of a proposed ordinance. What, what, uh, what do you think? Beginning? I, I'd rather know what you're thinking at the beginning of this process rather than several months down the road. And the example I would use is the term amended performance standards has been bannered about. Um, what would you include as an example of coming up with some wording or a proposed ordinance now? Would the performance standards be tougher, easier? Um, and then finally, the last thing, look, you already addressed it, but you guys have been on board doing this project. Uh, have you reached out to the community? Uh, I know you indicated that you read the letters. Um, and has the Crooker team addressed the, the citizen comments on the website? Um, there's a lot of things we can talk about. I know that, but I, I think at the beginning, as far as I'm concerned, I just think we need to start at the beginning. And what are you guys really, really thinking? Okay. So Frank is raising his hand. Is okay if I? You want me to respond, or do you want to wait till the end? Go ahead. Go ahead. Take a second. Okay. Um, Tom, the the question of what's the plan look like for the site? Part of what we're proposing right now is a process whereby, similar to you having your mixed use commercial zone, whereby the planning board in dialogue with the developer talks about where the best places are for certain things to be cited. Now there was a plan, Crooker has had a plan for a couple of years that was I think submitted to the planning board a few years ago. But at this point, um, Crooker is waiting to see what are the standards and what are the ideas that come up in the process and when they go when if this say this approach is approved if there's a they go to an application phase they come in with a master plan where everything might go and you as a planning board would say why shouldn't this why couldn't you move this over here what about doing this what about doing that and that would be um that would be the time when that would be discussed uh, at this point, it's more important to figure out what are the standards for uh, what the project should be, the performance standard overall for the project in terms of noise and light and time of day and, and smell and you know, all those kinds of things. And then with those in mind, Crooker would then get its engineers and consultants and everybody together to prepare a plan that met those standards. And then you would, and the neighbors would have a chance to talk about it. So. That's why um, we haven't come forward with, these are all the detailed plans for what's gonna happen because we're proposing a planning process that is more dialogue oriented than it is, here's what we wanna do, <laughs> take it or leave it. Um, we will in the next meeting, if you pr proceed with this, we would come at the next meeting with an outline of what the ordinance would look like and the performance standards it would address and what it would mean as a process for you and a map, though we are going to be thinking about an overlay zone, so the map could be adjusted, but at least the map talking about what we see is the area in which there would be a master plan. So, uh, and, and we, you know, what we're going to be doing is logging and we're keeping track of everybody's comments. And as I said, some are 
as in the case of what's your site plan, some are more applicable to an application phase. Some of them would be, say, a comments on noise and so forth. They would be taken up at the meeting at which you were, we were proposing a noise standard. We'd have, here's what the people or comments are saying, and, and, and this is what we would do with it. Um, I know, and the last point Tommy made about is dialogue with neighbors. We are open to doing that and open to any discussions. You know, it's kind of hard to figure out how to do that in this current uh, climate. Uh, but I know Crooker in the past has had neighborhood meetings and they have minutes from neighborhood meetings and so forth. And that's um, something we, you know, Reagan and I are open to doing that. But, uh, you know, we want it to be a, a constructive dialogue in a sense that this dialogue that we've set up through with the planning board and with them and so forth would be one that I think we could systematically deal with issues as they come up. And then at the end, you as a planning board have the decision, did we meet the test? And that is, is this something to recommend to the uh, town meeting. Okay, so maybe, uh, and forgive me for a second, Larry, let me, I, a couple things on what Tom was saying, right? Um, and I don't think any of us have an expectation that you have all the details worked out or that, in fact, we should be talking necessarily all the details, right? But I guess what I, I kind of like having some type of a concept plan and maybe what you said, where you're gonna have a map and show the overlay and, and that type of stuff, that certainly seems to be moving in that direction. But something that says, here's what we're thinking, right? Uh, we need to work out all the details on how we get to that, but here's at least what we're thinking, right? So let me go back in history a couple and make a couple comments, right? Because I've been reading the comments as well. This board did a straw man vote, not an official vote, but a straw man that said the board was willing to work with you on, on this project. In fact, this is, it's been quite a while ago now. Uh, we also had a joint workshop with the Board of Selectmen. And again, it was reiterated, I think, in that workshop that the expectation was is that we would work with you. Uh, and that came from the Board of Selectmen. I don't want to speak for any of them, but basically I think that uh, we could probably dig up minutes or whatever that, that indicate that. From a standpoint of the resolution, right? And I know that's one of the items you wanted to talk about. I don't have any issue with the resolution. Well, I shouldn't say that. I guess I think the resolution needs to be modified because I think that the planning board is not, our intention is not to create a zoning amendment, right? Uh, the zoning amendment that is created actually comes from you. Our intention would be to assist in the expiration of a possible zoning amendment, which I think is in line with your comment about, does it make sense and, and can we conceivably see it fitting in with a comprehensive plan? So I guess I would, if you ask me, can I sign up to that resolution? I'd say with changes, right? Because it really needs to be something that says that the board is here to work with you and assist you from a standpoint of helping to provide guidance and so forth. But we need to have something that we then take to the process where we, at the end, where we go through the public hearing process and make recommendations, right? And I don't think we're there uh, in, in any way, shape or form. So I guess I would ask you to reconsider how you're addressing that. The other thing is, I do think that, yes, we need to talk, you know, pieces. And I'm going to your schedule now. We do need to talk to different uh, pieces and, and, and allow the appropriate time so we can go through each of those. But I will say that, I guess, two things. One is I would at least take one of these and put an example with dates so everyone understands exactly what it means when it says the meeting date, post date, and so forth. Uh, but the other thing is, is that I think before we go into too much, we do need to come back and say, here's kind of the overall concept of where we're trying to go, right? And this is what we're trying to build. And if we take all these building blocks, that'll get us there, right? So I apologize for jumping before Larry, but Larry, why don't you go if you have some comments? Okay, not a problem, Don. You are the chair. Uh, so my my thoughts on it, I mean, I, I agree with... Uh, you know, the comments that have been said so far. Uh, one, I don't, I don't see a need for any type of resolution uh, being adopted by the board at this stage. 
Uh, I think that an applicant is perfectly free to come in, request a workshop, and have a workshop with the board. Uh, I do have the same concerns about we aren't really seeing anything that says just what is going on. Uh, the schedule that I'm looking at uh, that has each monthly workshop meeting. My question uh, to Frank is, is, is this proposal uh, just half baked so far? Uh, and is there any reason why a lot of this information can't be provided prior to, you know, uh, looks like two weeks prior to each scheduled meeting or each scheduled workshop? Uh, I think that cuts down the ability for board members to address it and assimilate it, as well as for the public to address and, and assimilate it. Uh, so I think that any of that information that can come forward ahead of time, as well as the proposed uh, zoning ordinance uh, is definitely helpful. I do understand the whole concept of site plan review, which comes later on down the road, but uh, we're obviously not looking at site plan review at this stage. Okay, thank you. All right, Frank, go ahead. Just quickly, um, Don, we can talk at the again, next meeting in broad terms about what functions would be moving from one spot to another. Obviously, there was a plan a couple of years ago, and we could show that, bring that back. Uh, but I, you know, I think the spirit of what we're trying to do here is one of not saying this is what we're doing this is the entire plan we're trying to create a process and an ordinance that would if it is in, enacted would create the uh, process for dealing with the master plan that you'd see the master plan and you'd see the studies you know and in detail and the engineers would be involved and so forth and you could really say you know this thing has got to be moved here or this doesn't work or how do we how do we make this thing work we're not going to have all those studies, the water, the you know, all those things, and I don't want to give the impression that that's all pre-baked. But we can definitely talk to you about functions, what's going on at the one site, and what needs to move to the other site, and why this general area works. And I'd be glad to do that. And 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 Larry, we'll try to you know try to get things earlier. We don't have a, a pre-baked ordinance. We've been looking around the country. There's not an ordinance exactly like this rest of the country. So, so some of this is going to be sort of worked up as we go. And in response to some of the comments that are made may require more research in certain areas than have done, but we'll try to get it, you know, earlier to you, um, uh, you know, if we can in the flow of things. Okay. May, may I ask one more question, Don? Please. Uh, so is the idea that uh, you are proposing a type of zoning district that could then be placed in a variety of locations around town. That, yeah. So that we have a district with certain types of performance standards, and then we have to determine ultimately where that is placed uh, within the confines of Topso. That is a, that is the concept. Now we'll, we'll talk about that at the next meeting. It could be a fixed district or it could be the floating zone the advantage of the floating zone is a floating zone expires after, if it's not used, it expires and the district reverts back to its prior status. You know, so the, if Brooker doesn't do something, the town then, that zone is then changed. So the future person doesn't come in and do that. Um, and it, there may be other resource industries that you would want this to apply to. So we're gonna look at it like that, but it, um, there will be some choices. I hope we have some discussion about that topic at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, Scott. Um, yeah, I mean, a number of comments, things to talk about. I don't know if right now is the best time or, or later, but you know, to that last point, I mean, this, this isn't something that we're thinking about applying all, you know, multiple places around town. It's clearly, um, as you presented and as Crooker has presented, it's for the Crooker properties, both of the existing quarry and the properties that have been purchased between 196 White House Crossing and uh, River Road. So, I mean, that's where it's focused on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 
I had some discussions with uh, emails with Rod and Andrew about this. I, I, I had expected that we would be, and I, I think you were asking this of us prior to the last meeting, that was that, um, that you, you wanted to get feedback on where we thought this proposed ordinance or potential ordinance um, could be or, or would not be. And I think in your opening statement, you said, um, is proposed zoning possibly consistent with the comp plan? Possibly not. Mm -hmm. you know, at this point, that's, that's what you're looking for. Um, and then the resolutions came out there kind of like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll be working on these things, work on performance standards, et cetera, to develop an ordinance and then make, uh, with the understanding that we're not determining whether it's consistent with the comp plan at this point, that that would be determined later, whether we um, put forth a ordinance to the select board and, uh, and from that point. Um, but it still sounds like what you really need from us is um, our feeling on whether it's consistent. Um, you know, I, looking, when I looked at your schedule, I mean, the first thing I said was, wow, this, you know, yeah, it goes through January, but that's a lot to cover in uh, the next few months. Um, but I also was looking at the topics and the materials and what we talked about last time with how, how the, uh, you put forth that it's consistent with the comp plan. And, you know, in my head, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, when traffic comes up, oh, we'll see some traffic studies, you know, to, to show that, uh, yeah, the decrease in quarry trucks heading over to the current site um, really does reduce traffic, um, even though, you know, you don't mention the fact that, you know, other crooked trucks and contractor trucks are now going to have to go to a new site. So, um, you know, that, that's not there. And I expected some sort of environment, you know, there would be some sort of environmental study discussing um, uh, information like, you know, odor. Um, in this area, which is the, you know, it's, there's no site plan, but we know the area that, you know, that, that the move is proposed for. Um, how far do these orders travel? I mean, I, I am not sure how we could help develop performance standards without having data from studies to back them up. And, and it's, a, it's a big unknown for me. I've, I've got some other things to mention uh, later on, but I think uh, I'll leave it at that point. So give Bruce some time before we move on. Okay, Bruce. Yeah, I don't uh, need a lot of time. I, I have a question for the planning staff. I read the memo from the 15th, obviously, about the quasi-legislative role as opposed to the quasi-judicial role. And uh, um, long ago, I often, you know, our job is to do, to look at this and uh, consistency is a big thing, but it's also what's in the, in a legislative role, what's in the best interest of all, all of Topsom, not just one area or another. I don't see anything about what would the old facility turn into? You know, what would the old site turn into? I mean, that's, that's relevant to a broader discussion, but everything I see here is, um, nope, we want to know what's, what are the bad things that are going to happen over on this new site, you know, and therefore how do we mitigate that? I agree with Scott, by the way, I don't think we can have specific stuff, but we could have general information about, you know, noise and distance and those kind of facilities, buffering, what works, what doesn't, those kind of things, those are generalized for an operation like Crooker is doing. Uh, I think you put any boxes on a plan and say where it's going to go, that instantly becomes, I don't want it there, so it should go here, and it becomes like an application. So um, I guess, is there any role for um, what happens at the old site for zoning, which is as uh, potential for the uh, town as well. And is that even relevant in this process? It, when you say a legislative role, it sounds like it is. When I look at all this and our schedule and what it doesn't, we're not talking about that. That's not part of the process. And if we are, that schedule just got a lot, you know, <laughs> the, the aggressive <laughs> schedule that uh, Scott just talked about. Um, it gets even more challenging. So 
what is the nature of the uh, quasi legislative role is the question for staff. And then my second point, so I don't have to talk anymore, is I agree with Scott about some generalized information of these kind of facilities so that we know what works, what doesn't, and that kind of stuff. That's somewhere in between saying, just show me what you're going to do, which is premature. Um, uh, and that would help with consistency, you know? If you're sitting there going, yeah, noise travels X hundred feet, thousands of feet, that kind of tells you something about consistency when you read the, the plan. So that's where I'm coming down. Um, I can address that question, Bruce, as best I can. Um, you are absolutely correct. What you see in front of you today and for discussion tonight was uh, put together by the applicant and the request that you've seen all along has been developed by um, the landowner applicant, if you will. As we move forward on this, you, you're bringing up something that is extremely relevant to the discussion where, where there is a proposal with perceived impacts and real impacts. There's also a proposal um, that they're not uh, coming with of leaving that site and what's the vision there and what's the zoning needs there. We, that's something that can absolutely be part of this process. You're not bound to not discuss that. That's up to this board as to what um, level of discussion you wanna take in that form there. Um, so yes, uh, uh, planning staff absolutely believes that's extremely relevant uh, as part of this process. Does that answer your question? Or it, are you looking to it does, but that just throws the whole schedule and the kind of stuff. If I'm, if you're acting, to the thing that's tipping out is the legislative role. Guess what? That means it's anything relevant to making the decision. In the, you know, that, that's um, right. That's right. Yeah, and and then and you know, there, there's the um, Andrew and I have discussed this as to what our role as staff is in 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 this discussion in this format. These are the discussions that we were we're looking for guidance from you folks on as well. So just bringing that up is particularly relevant. Yeah, um, without forecasting in any way what direction I would go, because I'm nowhere near any of that yet. Um, it would get. Let's say, for example, yeah, we're planning on putting our batch plan over there, and you know whether it's the old plan or kind of a bubble map or. With information that's got there, that we're planning on going there. That gives neighbors over there, which they already have, saying that changes our essential character and consistent, so they can make that. But if I then heard, and yep, we're going to keep the old plant right where it is too, and have two of them. Um, guess what? That that becomes a different conversation for me, uh, because then it's just expanding. You know, you know, it, there's no. There's no um, potential positive, there's positives on both and negatives on both, but you're gonna to need to see both in my view. And I know that makes it a bigger question, but I think it makes it a fairer question for all of Thompson. And that makes it longer and more work. So that's my perspective. Okay, so no, I don't wanna, all right, Reagan, but before you need to unmute. Um, I would like to start to get some public comments. Um, we've cut into my, a little beyond my half hour anyway, uh, but Reagan, go ahead. Sure, I, I just wanted to quickly clarify since Scott and Bruce kind of brought up this point about wanting more information. Uh, I think we were planning to talk about the schedule at the end, but I think our vision of this was as part of our materials we would be putting forward some general standards, um, you know, that we find in other ordinances that make sense for this type of development. And then as part of the public comment and to answer your questions, that would be kind of where we receive the feedback on it. And people say, we really find this, this is great, or this is not acceptable, but uh, we, do, we do anticipate putting something forward to start the conversation um it won't be it won't be um it depends on what kind of information we get as to how specific we can get but that is our plan all right so anyone on the board 
object to going ahead and getting started with some public comments. All right, good. Oh. Seeing none. Um, so I'd like to begin the public session. Uh, please, as was mentioned earlier, try to constrain your comments to three minutes. Um, we have obviously a lot of people to hear from. Um, you should try to go through either Andrew or Rod, um, you know, to um, uh, get, uh, they'll, they'll be addressing you and, and bringing you into the, um, the session. Um, and I guess that's it, unless you guys had some other direction, Andrew or Rod. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, right before the meeting, uh, I did get an email from Jim Howard with some comments. Uh, while we may not be able to necessarily read the whole letter, um, Rod uh, will get that posted, or Andrew will, uh, but Rod uh, can maybe uh, go through a little bit of that as well. So uh, if we could get started, I think I'm going to let Andrew and Rod kind of orchestrate this, uh, and we'll see, see if we can't get to uh, a lot of folks. All right. If you're interested in speaking, just raise your hand and I will allow you to talk. We've got James Temple. Hi, um, thanks for this opportunity. I have a couple of um, questions or comments, I guess. I did send a um, letter, a comments letter, but um, how many of you have gone to topsomemain.com and tried to find any information on this? I try, I, somebody told me about it. I went to the Topsom main site couldn't find anything. Looked under Zoning Board of Appeals, looked under planning, looked under all kinds of places. Um, I live on Coville Road and there's 98 houses in here, I believe, and I'd be willing to bet probably 10 people know about this. And it's definitely going to affect us if it becomes an industrial zone right next to us or some type of industrial zone. Um, with it. So I would suggest either a planning board or crooker or a combination of that do some type of notification to people within, I don't know, you want to set some limit of um, distance, but certainly from Pajepskit Village past our development would be affected by that. And then on the other side of 196 for a ways. That letting them know that this is going on uh, what the general proposal is to um, to make a change with it. And I guess that's primary, since you're not getting into specifics, um, Frank said at the beginning they didn't want to get into water quality and pollution and that type of thing. But I certainly think that's a, even in general terms, that's a viable piece of information for any type of industry moving in there. Um, Every time they blast, my house shakes. Um, certainly this won't improve that type of thing. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, so I, I mean, I've read, not, I won't say I've read 100% of everything that's come through, but pretty close. Uh, and I've done it through links um, in the emails that I get uh, from planning staff with the, the meeting agenda. But Rod, maybe either you or Andrew could address that. Yeah, we do have the very particular website page of topsomemain.com slash crooker dedicated to this project. So um, everything related to this project, including the public comments, the agendas, um, there are links to the minutes are all available there. There's information that identifies the best way for the general public to participate in this process. Um, and there is also a link on topsomemain.com, the very first page in the lower left hand corner, uh, pretty large text in blue letters uh, that provides a link to that Crooker page. Um, so that those are our paths. I'm happy to receive other suggested routes to publishing this. Um, a, a large scale notification is not generally something that you would do for a legislative type act like this. Um, I will add uh, just for the public listening too that we have had many calls um, and we do assist people in even registering, walking them through the website, how to register for a Zoom meeting. Uh, our office is open, we're, we're available. We're happy to help folks out. Um, 
<clears throat> I do have Shelly Garrett next to speak. Please bring her in. Shelly, can you unmute yourself, please? Well, this is Craig Garrett, Shelly's husband. She must have uh, signed us up, and she's out, out and about. So this is Craig Garrett. I also raised my hand. That's fine, Craig. Uh, and your address, please? 8 Big Pine Drive Thank in you. Thompson. Uh, we moved to the great state of Maine, my wife and family and I, um, in the month of October. Um, we bought our dream house in January at 8 Big Pine Drive. If you're not familiar with this area, I understand, and we learned after we bought, that this was happening right next to our property, potentially. Um, we own a 5,000 square foot home with an outdoor swimming pool. It's a beautiful place. I was shocked. We thought we were having earthquakes the first time we heard the, the, the explosions of uh, what we learned later to be from Crooker. And I can't imagine what that might do to our property value and our home. Um, again, we just bought this home seven months ago. So um, I was not aware of this at all when we bought our home, and it certainly would have been something that we would have um, considered had we known. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I also agree um, that there needs to be a lot of transparency in what needs to happen, not a bring something forward and then we'll discuss it after we've got our foot through the door. Um, we need to be very, very upfront with everything that's happening at the right time. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for letting me to, uh, to join your process. I will end. Thank you, sir. All right, I have uh, Robin Brooks uh, to speak next. Good evening, uh, Chairman Spann and planning board members and um, our town planners. I'm Robin Brooks. I live at 47 Ivanhoe Drive. We uh, bought this home in 1998 and um, it was a lovely place to raise our child. Like others have mentioned, we've, we feel the blasts here. We feel the house shake. Um, and it took a while for me to discover where the Pajepskit pit is. I'm aware that there is a Jack's pit, which Crooker owns, which is industrial zoned land where they could easily move this whole operation uh, without any impact to local neighbors um, and neighborhoods. Um, I would second Mr. Temple's comment that um, that there needs to be transparency and that we need to to understand. Uh, I think the planning board needs to know um, how a new industrial zone fits in with the Pajepskit, Ivanhoe, Coville Drive, and River Road neighborhoods. Like, how does that fit in? My reading of the comprehensive plan, gentlemen and ladies, um, I attended a lot of the charrettes and meetings and um, got. Um, a reassurance from the chair of the uh, comp plan review uh, committee as well as the members that they were not committed to um, the crooker zone which is the land where the pit um, where the um, asphalt manufacturing is currently cited that was just a uh, kind of pie in the sky vision um, and they never endorsed um, heavy industrial zoning in our neighborhood. In fact, the language and the commitment was to preserve and protect existing homes and existing neighborhoods. We're a huge part of the Topsom tax base, and, um, and I know you know that. Um, so as you can hear, I'm really concerned, but overall for the health effects as well as the, um, the quality of life. And I, you know, there's no question that heavy manufacturing, asphalt is dirty manufacturing, and even with any clean updates, we're still looking at particulate matter in our air, in our, um, you know, drift into the Androscoggin River. Um, we're looking at um, knowing that the airflow is usually e uh, west to east, that we're going to be downwind of heavy industry. I would never, ever have bought my home in Ivanhoe if I had known there was a risk of heavy industry in the vicinity. I just need you to know that right up front. My husband would second that. So I really appreciate the time to make the comments. I'm going to be following the process and I really appreciate you all welcoming us in and um, thank you. Thank you, Robin. All right, we have Luis Larios to speak. Yes, my name is Luis Larios. I live on uh, 2 Berkeley Lane um, in Topsom. Um, 
And uh, I believe that there has been too much, too much land clearing all around Thompson for development, causing massive wildlife habitat loss, ruining the natural areas surrounding our neighborhoods, uh, all for the sake of the almighty dollar. Um, I'm really against it. Uh, I believe that rezoning would not provide protection from this wildlife habitat loss, nor protection from any increase in noise, and it would definitely decrease our property values. Uh, I do also feel the explosions in my basement, and I expect to be seeing cracks in my basement walls in the near future. Um, so I just want to reiterate again that I'm against rezoning our neighborhood. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Lewis. We have uh, Allison Castillo. Allison? Yes, hi. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, my name is Allison Castillo. We're at 647 River Road. Um, I just want to second a lot of what I've heard from our other community members here tonight. I also want to touch on a couple of questions. Um, in terms of studies that are potentially going to be performed, I find it interesting that we have a discussion started without any data or information to tell us what the impact on a neighborhood and the humans in the neighborhood and the animals in the neighborhood might be. Um, so I, I'm just wondering in terms of starting a discussion, you know, why we're even going without that information. And secondly, as we acquire info and, and Reagan, you even mentioned there are studies that can be performed. I'd like to know who would be performing those studies. Are they going to be third parties? Are they done by Crooker? And what have we learned from where the current plant is today and the impact on the neighborhood there? Thank you. So Frank or Reagan, can you address any of those comments? Uh, yes, uh, I think that the, uh, the it, these are things we can look at, the current impact. Uh, we can get some information on that as we go through the process. I think, again, as we've scaled it or stepwise it, some of these questions we'll be looking at, what are the national standards or what are the national experiences? How would that work into an ordinance here and so forth? Um, the, the question though, and the, the Scott raised this too, is the question of how much study goes in prior to an application. Um, Part of the, uh, uh, I think the, the Crooker Corporation's reluctance is to spend $200,000 on feasibility studies around an unknown, unknown, you know, without knowing what the standards are they're trying to meet or what's going on. So is there's a chicken or egg aspect to this. Um, uh, but we, we want to provide as, as the best guidance about what our standards around the country for these things, but then look at when an application comes in at that point, then it's the Crooker Company's responsibility to, to answer um, uh, the, the comments that were just, you know, uh, the comments about what are the effects in the animals, what are the effects in the wildlife, where's the odors go, what's the wind patterns that Robin Brooks mentioned, you know, those are things that, you know, would require the, that level of study. It's hard, you know, we're not doing our site plan application at this point. And that's, and, and the results of this process may cause Crooker to say, maybe we should arrange our things a little differently. So that's, and that's a healthy thing. It's not a secret. It's, it's healthy that, that if comments come in around a certain thing and we look at them and say, maybe we can uh, uh, arrange it differently and address that comment. But in any case, we will come next month and talk about the, the big picture these are the activities going on here. These are the activities going on there. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you bring someone else in, Rod, or Andrew? I have Curtis Picard. Curtis, please. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Curtis Picard. I live on Roberts Hill Road. I also serve on the uh, Thompson Development Board. Uh, but I'm here speaking on behalf of myself. Um, the way I look at this is you have a business, in this case, Crooker, wanting to relocate within uh, town boundaries. 
And it sounds like there are two primary options uh, as far as this process goes. Uh, one option would be the planning board or staff to draft a possible zoning resolution. Uh, the, the pitfall with that is that um, it would put the planning board in an awkward situation of it looking like you are drafting a zoning resolution uh, that would benefit a particular business. In this case, uh, the other option is where an applicant would make a proposal that goes through a process that is uh, appropriate and transparent. And I, I, my understanding of the discussion tonight is that's what we're talking about doing, is making sure that there is a process going forward that is transparent and reasonable, um, and that there are frequent opportunities for public input. So um, I hope the planning board will support a process going forward that would enable that process. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Andrew? Uh, I don't have any other raised hands at this point. If people are interested in speaking, uh, please raise your hand. I have Kurt on the line now. Hi, thank you. Kurt Newfeld on 14 Mary Meeting Drive. Um, uh, as Curtis before me, uh, I, I am all on the Thompson Development Inc. board um, in full disclosure. And uh, you know we have discussed that internally uh, the ramifications. Uh, we did support a letter uh, or send in a letter. And again, I would just like to say that I would support the process uh, of this to develop, uh, request that the uh, applicant develop the studies that would be necessary and the planning board to develop any standards uh, that would be appropriate for this and give them an opportunity to meet those standards. Um, Again, it's a process. I'm not here voting on a, a site plan or anything else. I just think that the uh, applicant should be given a chance to approach this. Thank you. Thank you. And just, um, I guess for the record, I did recuse myself in regards to this topic with TDI. Um, and I am on the TDI board. Um, any other? Uh, I don't have any other raised hands at this point in time. If you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. All right, Rod, while we're waiting, uh, if you would, please just briefly, uh, Jim had sent an email. Maybe you could just tell us about that. Yep, we I, have realize resident, you can, I realize you're going to post it, so. Yeah, we're going to be posting anything we receive, like I said, every Friday. Uh, but they couldn't attend the meeting. They really wanted to have a public comment uh, read um, uh, the sentiment was of support. It's Jim Howard who lives on Beechwood uh, and mentioned the over 10 years of planning and the past precedent of Topsom working on planning processes that move forward zoning uh, to be brought to the residents as a vote by the legislative body. So it was a letter of support to move forward with the process. Okay, thank you, Rod. Andrew, any other hands? Yes, I have Michelle Vermet. Michelle, you're muted. Hi, Michelle Vermet. I live at 60 Ivanhoe Drive. Um, and I just wanted to say that I find it very disconcerting that we're discussing this still. This has been on the table for a couple of years. Um, the bottom line is that this will have a very negative impact on hundreds of Topsom residents. This will affect all of the people who live on the River Road area, Pajepskit Village area, the Ivanhoe area, the Meadow Crossroad area. We essentially will be now having an industrial construction zone in our backyards. I've lived here since 1986. There are a lot of new families who've moved into this neighborhood because it is a quiet residential area where they feel that it is safe and healthy to raise their children. And I have a lot of concerns about the environmental impacts of moving this facility, the noise impacts. Um, none of this I know will be addressed um, until further down the road, but just looking at it as a non-professional person, 
in this field, it's very obvious that there are going to be far reaching effects. So I would urge the members of the planning board to, to really look at this closely um, and also put the shoe on the other foot and think about if this were going to be happening in your backyard, in your neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Andrew? I have Clay, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Clay. I live on 5A Street in Topsom. And although my neighborhood isn't gonna be impacted by the proposal from Crooker, my heart goes out to those neighborhoods. I chose the neighborhood that I live in because it's quiet and rural, um, community oriented, and it's not next to a huge industrial operation. Um, I go running in those neighborhoods and walking in those neighborhoods. And like the previous caller, I would like all of you to think about your homes and why you chose where you live and how you would feel if this project was coming in your backyard. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Clay. Andrew, any other hands raised? Yes, I have Dan Flagg, Jr. Dan, you're muted. How's this? Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm gonna kind of bring up I, the Dan, same your thing I- Your address, oh, please. Oh, I'm um, 32 Beachwood Drive in Thompson. Thank you. I'm going to bring up the same thing I, I kind of stated back in 2018 at a planning board workshop. Uh, Crooker does not have title right of interest to 196 from this property. They want to rezone and put in an entrance off from Route 196. There's a private property owner that won't sell to them. And there's central main power that's basically a hurdle. Until we get some resolution on whether or not they even have the ability to plan an entrance and DOT buys into this process. I mean, we have Bruce Van Nose, DOT commissioner, which is on the planning board. Why are we putting the entire town through this? I guess that's, that's my comment I wanna come across tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, any, anybody else? I have Shelly Garrett again, uh, raising her hand. Okay, Shelly. Well, it's Craig. I guess I'm Shelly for tonight. Sorry, um, uh, a yeah. big pine drive. Uh, I just wanted to address Mr. O'Hara. Um, I greatly appreciate the, uh, the economic uh, boost that this potentially could have. But um, one of the things that I would like to draw to everyone's attention is for a, for a company like, like this one, like Crookers, to spend the $200,000 on an economics, on a study, that certainly could impact me as a homeowner potentially in my overall um, <laughs> home. So to, to me, I don't think, I think they need to do their homework and bring that forward. I don't, it, it really scares me. Uh, like the previous caller said, I've only lived here for seven months. We're surrounded by beautiful trees. Um, since we've been here, we hear the logging going on out there. Um, that's disruptive. We didn't know about the blasting, didn't have any idea. Um, again, we, we spent almost $500,000 on our home. Who's going to want to live next to, a, to an industrial site? Um, $200,000 for a crooker if they want to do this, I think is a small, small price to pay to bring forward. So thank you for the second opportunity. Right. I will, uh, Shelly will no longer talk tonight. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other hands, Andrew? Uh, no other hands raised at this point in time. Oh, just kidding. We've got Keith. Come on down. Keith, you're muted. Keith, go ahead. Keith, we don't, we're not getting any audio from you. Okay. Let's 
Um, there Thanks. is a, a, if you are unable to have audio work, you can uh, type a chat message in that Andrew and I can relay to the panel. Uh, I've lost Keith. I don't have any other hands right now. If you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. All right, we have Terry Porter. I'm not there. Terry, you're muted. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Sorry, I couldn't find the button. <laughs> um, I live at Six Collins Circle in Topsom. And um, when I learned about this proposal coming from Crooker, I did a little background research, um, which wasn't easy. I had to do some digging in the databases at the University of Maine. But it turns out that Crooker's um, not a small company and they're not a local company and they're not a rural company. Uh, their income last year was $47 million, um, which makes them a large corporation. Um, and that concerns me because the premise of this proposal that we've been hearing about is that Crooker should fit into the comprehensive plan because they're rural and local. Um, but they own property and operate uh, operate in many towns in Maine. And in 2014, they were cited by the state uh, Department of Environmental Protection for um, uh, breaking the regulations around um, developing the site that they were working on in Whitefield. They were excuse me. They were fined twenty one thousand dollars in order to stop. And four days later, the DEP inspectors went back and found that they had not stopped their operation there. So um, all these facts um, were not easy to find, but they're the truth about who Hooker is and the way they operate. And um, I'm, I'm very nervous about the whole project for lots of reasons. And particularly I'm nervous about the uh, Crookers or the consultants trying to get the planning board to sign on a, a resolution of some type before the process really even gets going. So I would urge the planning board not to sign any resolution. Um, I agree with the member who suggested that a resolution actually really isn't even necessary. Um, and so I thank you for uh, listening and thank you for making this a public process. Okay, thank you. Andrew? Uh, any raised hands? Um, if you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. I don't have anyone right now. Okay, last call. Oh, I, think, I think we're going to attempt Keith again. Okay, Keith, one more time. All right, is it working? It is. All right, so I live at 7 Big Pine Drive in Topsom. Um, so where this is proposed, it's actually right in my backyard pretty much. Um, so I know last time we talked about this, we had the meetings and stuff, and people talked about the taxes dropping because your value is going to drop and stuff, but everyone knows that the town won't drop your taxes because they just continue to go up. So we're going to have an industrial zone behind our backyard and all we're going to do is get hurt by it and punished by it. So that's an issue. Crooker also has to figure out how they're going to cross the tracks and get permits and all that to cross the tracks. Um, and then usually you guys had rezoned Topsum how you wanted to with the industrial zones and stuff like that. Um, Crooker actually has two pits already in industrial zones, 
as someone said earlier, and they could actually move to one. Um, but they haven't even talked about that or tried doing that. And then they always talked about having small blasts. Well, I know I was home during this COVID and one of the blasts scared my dog, scared me, made my brand new sliding door vibrate and a picture actually fell off the wall. They claim that they're small blasts. They claim that they have monitors everywhere. Everyone that has talked has said they felt blasts. There's definitely bigger issues going on here than what has been spoken of before. Um, and then also operation hours. Right now, they're allowed down River Road. They're 6.30 to 6.30, I do believe. It's a quiet zone. Um, are we really going to put an industrial zone in the middle of a quiet zone? I mean, this doesn't make sense to me. But I guess there's a couple, couple of questions I have there and concerns. And I mean, there's plenty more, but we'll just continue with the process and I'll comment later. So I appreciate the time that you guys took to talk to me. Thank you, Keith. All right, any other raised hands? Um, if you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Okay, I have Janet Fogg. And please state your uh, address, Janet. Yes, Janet Fogg, uh, 20 Coville Road in Thompson. And I just, um, well, I've written into to you guys, so I think you've probably seen my comments. Um, but I just had wanted to answer to um, to Bruce, who was talking about the um, the advantage of the Crooker district. You know, that's that's proposed for if Crooker actually moved out of its present site. Um, I, I I agree with Bruce that that would be a, a nice thing for you know for Topsom to have an area like that. But I fail to see how that means that the area around my house and a lot of other people's homes in this area, why they should have um, a lot of, um, you know, be taken, not taken advantage of exactly, but have a lot of adverse changes in our neighborhood because we want something else for the rest of the town. Um, what would other parts of the town think about things happening like that to them? If you change our districting and makes, make us a, um, an industrial site near us, what's to stop this from happening in other neighborhoods? And I think other people in Topsom should be aware of what's going on. Yeah, what's going on. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Janet. If you're interested in speaking, please raise your hand. I don't have any right now. I have uh, Dot Bowie. And please state your name and address. Hi, um, this is Dot Bowie. I'm at 477 River Road. Um, this proposal would also be in my backyard. Um, I'm very concerned for many of the reasons that people have already stated. Uh, the title of the proposal says how it uh, follows the comprehension plan. And I really challenge that. I would like, I would hope that the planning board would really take the time to put the two documents side by side. Um, because uh, in my research, um, the proposal does not match the town's comprehensive plan. Um, and I know a lot of time and effort was spent creating the town's comprehensive plan um, as a driving force of how we want to see our town develop and grow. And um, I think to allow a large area of neighborhoods to be changed like this forever uh, really doesn't match the town comprehensive plan vision. Thank you, that's what I have to say. Thank you, Dot. Is there any other interested parties? Uh, please raise your hand.
Don, I don't have any uh, raised hands. I I think we're I think we're done with public comment. Okay, thank you, um, and thank you very much for your comments. Uh, we'll certainly consider your thoughts as presented, uh, both prior to this meeting via the website, but also uh, during the public uh, session that we just had. Um, I'll just, again, encourage everyone to take a look at um, the topsmaincom slash crooker page uh, or website um, to see the documents being posted, but also if you want to submit anything, please send it to planning at Um And I would say if you're having any trouble getting through, uh, please do call either Rod or um, Andrew uh, to help you with uh, accessing that. Um, so I guess comments from the board or from um, uh, Mr. O'Hara, if, if there's some thoughts you'd like to get before we uh, close this particular uh, workshop, um, I guess now's the time to speak. Thank, thank you, Don. Uh, I would say uh, I think this was a good uh, exercises it's very informative the peak concerns in people's minds and their love the neighborhood and that comes through loud and clear and um, I hear from the board I, I think a need for more information that you know we again we don't want to be a do a site plan review as part of creating an ordinance but we can provide whatever whatever is uh, uh, you know practical to help you out and I think I do think that this you know we're Reagan and I have come in the middle of this a little bit and this has been going on for a couple of years and Mike Abbott made a presentation a few years ago and I'm kind of assuming everybody has that as background but I think it might be good at the next meeting as part of it to do the big overview again again not a lot of detail, but you know what are we talking about What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What are the things that are going to move? What are the things going to stay? What's going to happen to the old site? That sort of thing, as well as then getting into here's a here's a um, draft ordinance outline, and here's all the pieces of it, and and make some language about process and master planning and so forth, and then subsequent meetings would get into the details, buffering standards, environmental standards. Um, transportation, those kinds of things. Okay. Comments from any of the board members? Are we, I mean, what are you looking for here, Don? You want a little feedback on, you know, the resolution, the schedule? Are we? Well, yes, maybe some feedback. I, I guess I didn't mean to squash it all together i just yeah the, the resolution anyway um as stated isn't something that i think we can ask the board to right engage in i think if it had something more along the lines of assisting you know um exploring what we can do here uh that would be would at least make more sense to me and i and I, I do like frank I, whether we call it a concept plan or not i think an overview of what where they're trying to go even if we don't have all the detailed site plan stuff would be important but i do think you know it's primarily we're here to assist not to create and and maybe that's the best way i can word it but um i think we need to probably have a, a little bit more information uh, before we do any resolution i i guess i'd ask the board but i think at least from my perspective, I stand behind our uh, original uh, straw man that says we're willing to work on this process with uh, them to see if there's something there, right? So unless anyone on the board objects to that or, or uh, disagrees, I think we continue to move forward. But uh, I guess maybe more than you were looking for, Scott, but that's at least my thoughts. No, that's good. Now I can, you know, it's entree to provide my thoughts. Um, you know, I, you know, having the resolution in front of us, having talked about consistency with the comp plan at the last meeting, you know, I, I, I went back and reread the comp plan um, and looked at it. Um, you know, I, I know there was a straw poll a few years ago that we were going to work on this. And, you know, I, I, 
irregardless of, of, of what I'm about to say, I am, I'll, I'll be here. I'll be working on it. I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll sit with these uh, workshops and, and do what we decide to do as a board. Um, you know, obviously Crooker is a big part of this town, has been for a long time, big taxpayer. Uh, a lot of employees, uh, residents of this town are our neighbors, are our friends on the planning board. Um, they do a lot of great uh, philanthropic uh, activities for the town, whether it be local clubs or the schools. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons, you know, we've, we've been here. We, in, we, we look at these proposals from folks, whether it be a business in town or um, other people in town or groups of folks, or we bring it up from the planning board ourselves. You know, that, you know, that's why we've been looking at it for a while and we'll likely continue to be looking at it. Um, <clears throat> you know, initially, I thought a resolution was coming up. The one thing that's been discussed um, in that and in the beginning of the meeting is, you know, that whatever zoning amendment that may come out of this process needs to be consistent with the, with the comprehensive plan. Um, Frank, you asked to make sure you know, to, to kind of tone that a little bit, saying, can it possibly be consistent with the, the plan? Um, and, and you guys made a lot of really good um, points in the last meeting, uh, brought out a, a number of topics from the, the comprehensive plan as to how they relate to this project. Um, as I've been ruminating on this, uh, probably more than I should be, maybe I'm just procrastinating with work, but, um, you know, I, I just want to give you three examples. And, and these, I think, are the three big points of consistency that you tried to, you put forth last week. You know, uh, one is, you know, reduce traffic and improve hazardous roadways or intersections. Um, you know, this, this is certainly a point for discussion. And this is something that um, if we had traffic studies or, or forecasts um, of future traffic or understanding, you know, how that would change, we could sit down and we can evaluate that. We can evaluate how, how a proposed zoning amendment to do something like this may um, be consistent or not consistent with traffic and the roadways and intersections. Um, you know, another big one, and, you know, Bruce brought it up. It's, you know, it's kind of one of those carrot type vision things that are in the plan. And that is, you know, the redevelopment of the current site, the, the quote catalyst uh, zone, um, which is great. I mean, there's some, there's some really good um, ideas and visions for that area, be it uh, the type of housing, the type of business, the parks, et cetera, that could go in there. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a feel good uh, uh, growth area in town. Um, but, and moving Crooker is obviously a necessary step for that to occur. Um, but I agree, I, I'm not sure I agree that um, we, I don't know how it's gonna work as far as tying that into this discussion, but um, I don't think it's, it's not directly tied to the rezoning that you're talking about. I mean, Crooker could move elsewhere. They, they provided scenarios and alternatives um, in the past years to move to uh, existing, you know, near Jack's Pick, near the other quarry, into the industrial zone as it exists now. Um, so, you know, in that, for that point, I agree. Overall, it's consistent with the comp plan, but is it directly relevant to what we're trying to do here? I'm not sure. Um, and then the last one is, you know, the big, the elephant in the room, the rezoning, rezoning uh, for the new site, rezoning uh, some of this, you know, R2 and industrial land to be a, uh, what, what you call it, a resource industry district or, or something similar. Um, you know, and this, this is really the, the big point we have to consider, is that going to be consistent with the comp plan? Um, you know, I, I think there, you know, the resolutions at hand and input for other groups are talking about, you know, proper performance standards, uh, protective of, you know, the neighboring z uh, zones and properties, you know, such that the proposed zoning change would be consistent um, or must be consistent with, with the plan. And, you know, maybe I, I can see where those will help, but, um, but I'm not sure that I can see uh, how it is possible that the plan could be consistent with um, that part of it with the comp plan. I mean, 
you know, my, as a layman reading the, the comp plan, um, that discussion of the industrial zone or uh, industrial special district really is focused on and, and states, I quote, this district outlines the existing industrial zone, okay? And the intent of future group, uh, growth or transformation that may be desired for that specific area. And when it relates to zoning, it's saying future zoning efforts should assess and if necessary, amend performance standards to address potential impacts of industry, the growth of industry within that zone on adjacent land or neighborhoods doesn't talk about expanding that zone. So, you know, my take is that really, you know, that, that the new performance standards are to be evaluated on changes within the zone that exists and not to try and expand that zone or some similar zone to the R2 or R3 areas that surround it. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I'm not sure what, if there is a possible track for me. Though I'm, I'm only one of six people that will be evaluating this on the, on the planning board. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I, I, I re up for this, knowing that this is coming. So, you know, um, I'm here. I'm, I, I'm going to be at the meetings. I'm going to be listening and talking. And um, I, I, I will continue to take up probably too much more, too much of your time than I should. But um, I just wanted to, you know, throw those ideas out there. Thank you, Scott. Anybody else? Go ahead, Frank. And then, then after, after Frank, Tom. Okay, good. Um, Scott, thank you. Very thoughtful comments you had. Uh, let me, on the first one, just on the traffic, I just want to challenge you a little bit on that, which is, you said, if you had a study that showed all the impacts, you know whether or not it was consistent. So, in other words, you have something in your mind that is a standard that you would evaluate the data from. What we're trying to get at here is, can you state the standard without having the completed traffic study on the site plan review. You know, that's sort of the challenge for the for the group. And, and it's and it is a challenge if we don't always if don't know all the things we should be looking at. And I think your uh, comments on the plan, I, I, I appreciate that. It's a, it's a, a plan that's very dialogue oriented as a plan. You know, it's not the prior Topsom plan 2007 you know, had a series of policies and goals and like one policy, we want to expand the industrial zone up to Route 196, period, you know. So it's very easy to say, this is what it wants. The, the, the plan that, that the update, it, you know, has results as a lot of conversations and, and they're kind of included in the plan. And, and it, you know, it, it gives the feeling and what I come away from it is that it doesn't want to be fixed and deduction oriented like the prior, it, it, it expects a discussion, expansion of ideas, new things coming up, you know, and so forth. And so um, in some ways I look at this, this zoning thing as a continuation of a dialogue that was started then and it's around Route 196 and it's been going on for 15, 20 years now. Um, but I appreciate your concerns that, and that's why we wanted to focus that question tonight. And, and, you know, I concur, right? You know, I, I think the, the point you made about one, the one nice, the original, the earlier comp plan and the 196 corridor plan, they did have clear, clear guidance on what, um, some very good specifics. Um, by the way, we did extend the industrial zone out to 196 so they could have access to 196 exactly as that plan stated. Um, you know, the, yes, the comp plans are, you know, visionary and, kind of a thoughtful look for the future and maybe a little more worthy than need to be. Um, but, you know, the back of this, the end of this plan does have a number of goals. It's not as specific as the last one was, but, you know, I, uh, I hadn't seen these because the last version of the plan I had read was the draft before it went final. Um, and, and looking at them, I, you know, I tried to see if there were any potential visionary goals listed in there that said, um, you know, address the uh, something similar to this uh, industrial district uh, and expanding it. And there isn't, I mean, the, the, what, the ones I do find there are, you know, uh, 
update zoning code to permit rural development that responds to rural character, including rural building group types. Um, update zoning code to allow rural building groups, uh, including hamlets, farm compounds, as a way to support rural character and support rural-based businesses. Um, that is the level of the, the comments that are in the comp plan. So just want to throw that back at you. But I, I like this dialogue. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Um, did let's see, Tommy, didn't you have something or did did you already no, I I just had something small. Um, let's don't lose sight of the folks as we go down this path. How would a major change like this affect the lives of people out there? I just think that any any discussion, any plans that even Crooker makes, got to take into consideration folks and what what would this do to them? That's all. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Anyone else from the board or Frank or Reagan? Do you have anything? If not, I'm going to adjourn. Are we voting on that motion? I guess do you need a motion for that? I don't think we need a motion for this one, but uh, was someone trying to, Reagan, were you trying to talk? Uh, so I guess I want to be clear at, at this point, we're going to go ahead with the schedule that we had proposed. The, the planning board is uh, allowing us to come back on August 18th to continue with our discussion. Uh, yes, uh, however, I think, I, I guess I would kind of modify the discussion uh, next yeah, time think, around, um, consistent with what we talked about. But I'm sorry, yeah, John. What what I what I will plan is Andrew and I will work on a summary of this of the comments tonight. Provide the applicant with some uh, some clear direction from what the board and what the uh, comments we receive, so that they are well prepped for the next meeting. It seems like a concept plan of some sort, uh, a review of the exact area uh, that is proposed for rezoning, a better idea of the overall plan basically from the applicant uh, to then work backward on the uh, zoning, if you will. Well, I would, quite honestly, I would like to see what the proposed zoning uh, description ordinance is, is going to be. I mean, they're proposing an entirely new uh, zone. Uh, so I'd like to see what that actually is proposed to be. Because, I mean, in theory, uh, I look at it saying, well, yes, we're talking about a particular area of property, but once you have that in, is somebody going to say, okay, I want, I want to have that zone uh, over off of Cathayet's Road or, you know, uh, anywhere else in town? It's an existing zone. Uh, so I'd like to see specific language if I could. Yeah, I don't know if they'd be ready by August 18th for that. I think maybe the framework of the contents, you know, of a, of a zone, perhaps they could be prepped for. Um, but I'll leave that up to consultants. Yeah, thank you. Larry, I, I just say quickly, um, the question of whether this should be a, a, a floating zone or a fixed zone is something we don't have strong opinions about. We want whatever works best in a town context. And we'll, but we'll do the pluses and minuses next meeting. And we'll have an outline of the ordinance and some of the language around the initial master plan phases and so forth. We won't have, it'll be subsequent meetings to work out the language on standards. Okay, and, and I guess one thought, uh, you mentioned that the floating versus the fixed, I think there certainly may be some confusion as to what the definitions are there. So maybe you could help us with those definitions as well, right? Because I, 
I kind of heard it one way when it was first talked about, and then I thought I heard it a different way when there was additional explanation. So I think that would be useful. Um, so are we good to adjourn? Do I need to take a vote? Scott, is that a yes? Unanimous consent. All right. I think we're good. All right. Thank you, everyone, for their participation. Um, for the planning board, uh, please remember we have a planning board meeting this Thursday at 7. Um, and uh, again, uh, please make sure we have a quorum for that one. Thank you very much. I'll be here. Okay. Thank Excellent. you.